so my video cut this is the second take in the second part of the lecture so oh, okay in the last lecture our homology group would be isomorphic to the flat Gaussian femboys so FZ1 and so just anti-femboyize it so return uh, make the variables be a b instead of f1 and f2 and so that would give you just the regular homology group first homology group of the torus okay so now we're going to generalize the process to a surface with n holes so any number of holes natural numbers okay um, starting from zero of course that's just a trivial case it's just s1 or something that's trivial uh, something's isomorphic to a sphere, I mean S2, not S1. So it's something that's isomorphic to S2 or the femboy sphere, Fs2. And the homology group of that would just be isomorphic to uh, Z1 for regular surface and Fz1 for a, um, for a, uh, oh wait, no, it would be Z2. No, yeah, it would, yeah, it would still be one. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I mentioned in the first video that, you know, a point, right? So it would just be equal to a point. A genus zero surface would just be equal to a point, and then con it would be contractible to a point. And so the Feynman group would just be um, ID an identity, which is just one. So we start at genus one surfaces. Uh, would give us and so yeah so in general the formal group of a genus n surface and by extension a femboy space containing n holes or genus n femboy surface um, would be this here so it's a free group on two g generators so if our original fundamental group or if um, original torus is composed of two generators it's not two times uh, two which is four I believe yeah that doesn't quite make sense but uh, it starts with one anyway so it's a, a torus is a genus one surface so it would be two times g so that would just give us two okay all right so we we'll only consider n greater than zero okay so I'm denoting any genus n surface by this bold gn. And so it's one of my group would be this. It's a free group on two G generators, G1, A1, Gn, A N. And this isn't abelian just yet, okay? And of course these commutators, so these commutators and their composition would give us one. And the commutator would be G1 or G N A N. For any GN and AN inside here would be GN, AN, GN to the minus one, AN to the minus one, and yeah, that's it. And the reason why it's not abelian is because I can't just switch these around, okay? This is a specific travel along a torus that we took away from the genus N surface. So it kind of makes sense that we have two G generators because we had a bunch of tori and then we glued them together to get multiple a shape a blob that has multiple holes in it n holes in fact so in this case we're gluing n tori together and since there are two generators per fundamental group that would give us two times n so we sort of smash the fundamental groups together to get the fundamental group of the entire space so that is a demonstration of a relation that we will show in the end of this lecture okay so going back here Okay, so we just have our fundamental group now. So we stop here, but if we want to find the first homology group, let me just the space here. We mod out by the commutator subgroup. I'm just gonna make it like that, but it's implied that it's the commutator subgroup. So we mod out by this thing here, this relation, making it abelian. <laughs> so just imagine this one's near here, okay? mod gn a n I call this m here this part here this m because n would imply it's only this here but I want it to be indexed in this entire 
uh, in the index set that indexes all indices here. So this is n, and then that would give us the first homology group of this genus and surface, which would be isomorphic to z with the 2n. Okay? And if we femboyize things, it would just be fz 2n. So the femboyization of this genus and surface would just be attaching an f at the, at the beginning, right? And replacing all this with Fs, or femboys essentially, or abstractions, right? And so the H1 of F Gn is not Z2n because that would be incompatible, but rather F Z2n. Okay? For an n greater than 0. And of course, natural. That's my new way of writing the natural numbers, or the symbol for the natural numbers. Okay, so yeah, that's for a genus and surface. Now, so an, another example is if I have, let's say, a regular pretzel. So I have a pretzel. That would be something that's isomorph or homeomorphic to a uh, four-hole torus. The pretzel. What is the gene? What is the fundamental group of the tor of the pretzel? Well, we have four holes here, so it means it's a genus four surface. So it would be pi one of the pretzel mod, you know, the commutator subgroup. That would be isomorphic to z two times four would be eight. So it's eight because we originally had. Tori here, four tori, separate tori, disjoint tori, and then we glued them together to form this four hole shape. And so it would result in smashing the fundamental groups together, and so that would give us Z8. Alright, so that's an example. So I have a pretzel, find it. And that's one reason why a pretzel with four holes is not homotopy equivalent to a. Um, to a regular donut with one hole. It's because, one, their fundamental groups are different. For the fundamental group of a regular, um, the fundamental group of a regular donut only contains two generators. The fundamental group of a pretzel now, with four holes, of course, um, your pretzel, you can make your pretzel into multiple holes, right? Pretzel has four holes in our case here, so that would be eight generators, okay? So free group, not, not specifically Z8, but uh, the fundamental groups would be respectively free group of, I mean, fundamental groups would be respectively free group on two generators and eight generators, okay, respectively, for the, for the donut and the pretzel. So that's why they're not homotopy equivalent, because they have different fundamental groups. And that is the essential idea of these constructs. We are essentially using these things to categorize certain spaces um, of course, uh, according to how many holes they have. Okay. All right. So, after the genus and surface, um, as I said in the beginning of the lecture, let us now examine petals of roses. Because this is a different case. So, a rose in topology, I, I'm sure you guys already know this, I already discussed this. A rose is a bunch of circles attached at a singular point. So this is a rose of four petals. A very romantic mathematical construct. So a rose of four petals, it is, it is essentially the object S1, uh, S1 wedge product, S1 wedge product. S1, wedge product, S1. Where the wedge product here is gluing two spaces, S1 and S1, at a singular point, okay? So instead of a bunch of points and making equivalence relations between those points, we only have one point that we make an equivalence relation between these two spaces. So S1, uh, wedge, wedge S1 would give us a two-petal rose. I'll write it just as a landscape and then put the point in. 
So, very nice, intuitive. But what is the fundamental group of these things? Okay. So, the fundamental group of, let's generalize it, the thing is, the fundamental group of these things is not 2G, okay? It's not a free group on 2G generators. This is an entirely different thing, right? Because we have multiple copies of S1 here, it's just the fundamental groups of S1 put together. But the thing is, this is not the torus here. S1 is not, con the, the torus is not contractible to S1 in any way possible. So, this is a different case from our case a while ago of um, genus and surface. Although this has four holes in it, one-dimensional holes, the holes in the dimension are essentially different than the holes that we saw a while ago. It's not intuitively a hole in the sense in, uh, in a geometrically three-dimensional object, but this is a hole in the sense of in a loop, wherein there are no points inside there. So the fundamental group would be essentially different. So what is the fundamental group of a multiple rows uh, surface? So I will denote a rows of n petals uh, are tetracia n. Because um, maybe you might use rn as a different thing. I'll use tet, the tetracia notation. So the fundamental group of this will be a free group on n generators this time. A1 to the top AN. Alright. So it is, this is a much more simpler and tame discussion than the previous one. Because every fundamental group here, displayed here, or any fundamental group of these copies of S1, only contain one generator. So when we, of course, connect these guys together or glue them together, it would imply smashing these things, these individual generators together, which, which would just give us a multiple of this. So, yeah. It's not 2N here, because originally the torus has two generators, and when we glue them, we have multiples of two. But here, we only have one generator, so we have multiples of one. So, for the case of S1, wedge S1, our fundamental group, would be the free group on uh, two generators, AP. And the commutation relation, I believe, is different because uh, there is no solid, uh, yeah, there's no solid identification space for a literal circle because a circle is just constructed by identifying two points on a unit interval 0 to 1. Or, well, if you're talking in terms of the topologist sine curve to pi, okay, you just do whoosh and then you connect them together, you get a circle. Where in zero is identified with two pi. Or it could just be one. Both spaces are isomorphic anyway. I'll just, I'll just put one so it's simpler. Okay. So it's not clear yet, but it's implied that there is some commutator relation here. Um, but the point is, it is a free group on two generators A, B. And then for this one here, for this four petal rows, the fundamental group would be the generator, or uh, the free group on four generators, A, B, C, D. Or F, A, B, C, D. Okay. So, Let's apply the procedure again and find the homology groups this time. So the um, homology group would be, we would be modding this out. So I'm going to erase this. And the general procedure would be, uh, H1 of uh, N R would be isomorphic to the fundamental group of NR mod the commutator subgroup, okay? Which is still a free group on uh, however multiple, so A1, AN. Um, but that would be isomorphic because it's abelian now, right? We abelianize the group. It is now isomorphic to ZN. Okay. So, when we have a space that is composed of tiny spaces glued together, 
the funnel group is of some multiple of the original smaller space, right? Smaller space which you make copies of and then group together to make a total space. Um, so the generators of that small space that compose the entire space, I mean whose copies compose the entire space, would be a basis for which Zn would be our fundamental or our homology group, our first homology group. Okay. So, in order to get the homology group of the rose petal, or the petal of four rows of four petals, which is modeled out by this commutator slot group, which I will not fully write out anymore because it's so long. So that would be equal to the free group on still, uh, but this time it's a free abelian group. So we put an F. Uh, I put an AB in the front here to, to denote it as an abelian group. So free abelian group. Fab. Or capital AB. So it's a fabulous, just kidding, not fabulous, but uh, you get my point, it's an abelian group. So four. So A, B, C, D, which is F fabulous, or free abelian group on A, B, C, D which is isomorphic to Z4, okay? And this would be the free group on two generators AB. That would be the free the fab or the free building group on AB, which is isomorphic to Z2. And, all right, so now that we've given some examples and the general procedure for finding the first homology group of an n petal rose, now let's femboy, femboy thing. So what do we call a femboy that is a rose? You didn't say rose boys. Hmm, why not? So or a flower boy, because it's more it's more into what exactly is the aesthetic of a femboy. It's, it's, a, it's a flower boy. It's feminine. It's cute and uh, nice and all that good stuff. So we call a femboyization of an n petal rose to be a n rose boy or n flower boy. So that would be now denoted by a so a femboyization, right? So an embedding of nr into f would result in uh, an f nr. Okay. Which is the wedge product or the wedge sum of multiple FS1s. And so the fundamental group now of our F and R or flower boy of N petals would give um, would give the free group or the free we yeah, a free group on n femboys, which represent loops, of course, and you know that stuff, good stuff. And that makes sense, right? Because we essentially have loops here. A circle is essentially a loop, right? So we have four loops put together in our previous example, and two loops put together. So it would make sense, it would be generating two sort of equivalence relations of loops. Okay? Because every loop is isomorphic in a sense to this circle, except if it's a knot, really, it's not isomorphic to, I mean not isomorphic, homeomorphic to the circle, okay. Okay, so free group only on this much generators, or this much fanboys, and it's homology group, first homology group, is this mod the relation of fi i plus 1. Which is uh, okay. This one's just uh, free group on F one dot F n. Okay, and this one would be the f the fab fabulous. Just kidding. The free value group on F one through F n. One of the spirit that goes seeping through me. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. So the fabulous. I mean the free value group of these fanboys would be isomorphic to F, Z, N. And that rings true with our definition of one. 
So there's the so example example would be okay. Let's say let's find the first homology group of let's say uh, the twenty six the twenty six flower boy. Or the 26 rose boy, giving us well uh, F 26 R, which is 26 um, fanboy circles wedge producted together. Okay, so the first homology. Let's first find the my group. It's trivial. That would just be the free group on. 26 fanboys. So 26 fanboys generate this free group, and the homology group, the first homology group of F26R. So I guess you could visualize it like this. Put the dot. Dot. So there are circles in between these four circles, okay? Um, and they're just 26, right? So, yeah. That would be equal to the fab, the free abelian group on 26 fanboys. And that would be isomorphic to FZ26. Okay, and my storage is formed. Okay, so to wrap up things, let's give this uh, as a conjecture, or maybe something that's provable. For now, it's just a conjecture. It's a conjecture. The combination or the gluing of multiple spaces, which I'll denote via this hashtag, and it's um, and it's indexed by some uh, i of spaces i or x i or femboy spaces x i implies a sum of i of the fundamental groups of each individual constituent of the space. And you will see that this rings true with our previous examples. And so that ends this two-part lecture. Um, and so, yeah, enjoy your summer. I know I record this during summer, but yeah. Hope you guys have a good one, and this is a good place to stop.